Hello and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Raj and I'm a careers consultant here at UCL and I must have looked at over a thousand CVs over the course of the last few years. So if you want a CV that fully captures and reflects the quality you could bring to an organization, then stick around for eight very practical tips that could transform your CV today. Tip number one is putting exactly what the employer is looking for where the employer is looking for it. From a 2011 study where recruiters were looking at a bunch of CVs wearing eye tracking software, we have this particular image from the research study that shows quite a pronounced area on the left hand side that represents maybe one third, one quarter of the width of the text. And if we were to draw a shape of best fit, maybe a rectangle, we can see that it's particularly pronounced along that channel. So we then roughly know where employers are going to be looking. It then becomes a case of reconciling that to well, what do employers want to see? And I would say, you know, typically for a role, even if you're going for a PhD or a job or a master's or anything, it's generally going to come with a job description, maybe even a person specification. And this is going to help you out massively. I want you to use the area on your CV where the employers are looking at most to convey the attributes, whether that be below your education section, whether it be in your experience section, you're showcasing those skills so that where the employer is looking for those things, they actually have that evidence. And that's exactly what's meant by tailoring. Number two is to write killer impactful sentences in your CV. Now, often students might come to me and say, Raj, I don't know quite how to write about myself in my CV. I'm not sure if I'm saying the right things, conveying the right things, or, you know, I feel like I'm trying to sell myself. So one approach is to use this formula, skill plus evidence plus quantification where quantification is simply a number to provide a sense of scale. So you're looking to put the skill that the employer wants from their job description as literally the first word, which means the reader is most likely to see it because it's in that rectangle of best fit where we know employers look. And it anchors that reader's expectation that if they go across and read the rest of the sentence, they're going to get the evidence that that skill they want is about giving just enough detail for the reader to be convinced of your skill so you're showing them rather than simply telling them. And the quantification bit helps give that sense of scale to what you've done and it's important to know that while the formula suggests that the quantification or the number element should come at the end, it really needn't. As long as it features somewhere in that evidence section, you're doing great. So pro tip number three is using your experiences as a vehicle to convey the skills that the employer wants to see. So let's take one bit of experience and let's say that's your summer job. And we look at the job description and we take the top three things that they said they want. That's communication skills, planning and prioritization, and relationship building with relationship building being the top thing on the job description. I recommend shining those three skills through your experience, thinking of when you will have exhibited communication skills, when you will have exhibited relationship building skills in that specific experience, and describing that experience on your CV through those same skills. So instead of this approach, which is okay, however, it's simply a narrative account of what this person has done, this approach is far more powerful as it essentially takes the reader's hand and tells them what to interpret from this experience, highlighting those things that they themselves have said they want. And the important thing is not to just do it for one experience, but to expand it to other places and experiences too. So for an internship that this person has done, they've also gone ahead and characterized it through those same three skills that matter to employers on their CV. Okay, so tip number four is to keep it snappy. In many studies, there is an indication that perhaps only an average of five seconds gets spent on any CV, and that's a mean average. There are other indicators that suggest that the median average is probably in the two point something seconds. And you might feel like, well, hey, you know what, Roger, it's not fair. I spend hours, 
hours rehashing all of these things. I did all of what you said and it just doesn't feel right or fair that I should spend this amount of time and that the reader potentially only spends two point something seconds. And I would say, you know what, I have a lot of sympathy with that view, but that's the fact. What can we do to game that? What can we, what advantage can we draw from knowing that information? I want you to think of it in this kind of way. That first 2.5 seconds will essentially buy you another 10 seconds of attention. And by that time, you need to have shown enough evidence to buy a further 10 seconds of attention and a further 10 seconds. And probably it will be within a minute that they are putting your CV on the to be interviewed pile. Tip number five is not overstating modules in the education section of your CV. So modules mean a lot to us, right? We've lived them, we've breathed them. Maybe we've even cried some tears over them as well. Maybe we feel we have a right to put them and label them proudly on our CVs. But think of it from the reader's point of view. Let's say you've done a bachelor's in statistics and you are listing say five modules and one of them is statistical modeling. Now, the reader has no way of knowing what Bayesian techniques you may have covered, if you did Monte Carlo simulations, if you did the Black Skulls model, and so they've got no way of discerning what actually might be contained within statistical modelling. And so the more relevant a particular statistical technique or any technique from your degree is that you want to communicate to that employer, you probably will do far better by listing it explicitly. Number six is thinking about the aesthetic quality and value of the CV that you're putting out there. Now, there's an element of subjectivity here, right? But I think there are objective elements we can take and apply. And the first of those is fonts. I struggle a little bit with looking through a CV in a fluid way if a whole load of different fonts are being used, even if it's something like three fonts, you essentially want a CV as a document that is as easy to digest as possible. And this CV is far easier to read through and absorb. The horizontal lines coupled with the judicious use of bold helps lead the eye to where things are in a really obvious way. There is enough space between the different sections to invite the reader in. And with elements to the left and the right of the page, the page feels really well balanced with no area that's overly dense with material, while the bullet points help lead the eye to key areas. Tip number seven, the penultimate tip is talking about your skill with particular bits of software. Now, often I see software skills languishing right at the bottom of CVs, and I think it's a bit of a hangover from CV guides from the 1990s, where you just see, you know, Word, MS Office skills. And typically you'll see something like, you know, Excel skills intermediate. And I would say a couple of things here, right? Number one, hey, it's 2019, software is kind of a big deal. And number two, you really need to be contextualizing your software use. It's not gonna do me much good as an employer if I see uh, Excel skills intermediate, because I don't know if you can do pivot tables, I don't know if you can do VLOOKUP, I don't know if you can do VBA macro programming in Excel. Essentially, I don't know how I can use you in my organization. So you can just imagine this difference if you see on a CV intermediate Excel skills versus something along the lines of macro VBA skills within Excel have been developed by automating event visitor detail records into a reporting feature. Now immediately that employer can think, you know, hey, Jane's team does that. I can put you in Jane's team. You can work on those automated processes that we're wanting to instill in a slightly different context, but the same rules are gonna apply. One analogy might be if you go into a restaurant and the menu literally says the word, one word, it just says the word pasta. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, I want descriptions, right? I want to know if it's fettuccine, if it's spaghetti, if it's linguine. And if you're telling me that it's ribbon pasta in a cream sauce with morel mushrooms, then I'm all over that. By giving more information, you're allowing the reader to process and make better judgment calls on how you'll fit their organization. Allow them to get excited by you the same way I get excited about pasta. Okay, so 
So lastly, tip number eight is getting the length of your CV right. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is something along the lines of Raj, how long should my CV be? Should it be one page, two pages or what? And people generally want a precise answer, but this is one of those situations where a precise answer is generally arbitrary and potentially not very helpful. In my experience, there is no right length. There's gonna be a right length for your particular CV though. And the way that I might ascertain that is to have the job description that you're using this CV for in one hand, have the CV that you've written in another hand, and specifically, almost with a scalpel, you go through line by line on that CV to think about, well, what value is that particular sentence conveying? Is it helping the person who wrote that job description make a decision as to whether to give me an interview or not? And I would say be ruthless. If there are loads of sentences, if there are any sentences that aren't directly helping that reader make a decision on your suitability, then you can take that out. And that is how you can work to getting the right CV length for you for a particular role. It's gonna change all the time, it's gonna change relative to the role, and you are going to need to be judicious in giving the reader exactly what they're looking for and no more. That is gonna be the right length for your CV. Before I sign out, I'm gonna say, while I might make this sound quite straightforward, I know it's definitely not. If you're a student here at UCL, I would love to see you come in and show us your CVs. We can sit with you for 20 minutes to review them, to give you precise feedback on exactly what you're doing well and potentially what could work better as well. Lastly, this channel would be absolutely nothing without you. If you're a UCL student, please email from your own email address to this email and let me know what specific careers questions you want answered or you can leave a question in the comments section below and I'd love to help you with that. Lastly, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon if you don't wanna miss any of this content as well as a video we have coming out soon on how to plan your graduate job hunt.